These calls announce the start of a raid into land controlled by their neighbors. As they leave their core zone, the patrol goes silent, occasionally stopping to listen. Signs of the enemy are detected and examined closely. The chimp militia are now at the very edge of their territory. All need to be on maximum alert. They must wait and listen. An unfamiliar chimp call raises the tension. It's an uncertain time. The size of the rival group is as yet unknown. Not far away, their neighbors are feeding in a fig tree, oblivious to the approaching dangers. The patrol moves off with a sense of purpose. They must remain silent until they close in on their rivals. The attack is on. To intimidate their opponents, the aggressors scream and drum on buttress roots. Several males corner an enemy female. It's a ferocious attack, and she's lucky to escape with her life. Others are not so fortunate. The battle won, a grisly scene unfolds. An enemy youngster has been caught and killed. The carcass is shared between members of the group and eaten. Killing a competitor makes sense if you want to protect your food supply. But exactly why they cannibalize the dead chimp is not fully understood. It may simply be a chance for some extra protein. The character of the forest changes as you descend, becoming ever darker and damper, favoring different kinds of animals and plants. Less than 2% of the sunlight reaches the floor, but even here, there is extraordinary variety. In the great island of New Guinea, there are 42 different species of birds of paradise, each more bizarre than the last. This forest is so rich that nourishing food can be gathered very quickly. 
That leaves the male six-plumed bird of paradise with time to concentrate on other matters, like tidying up his display area. Everything must be spick and span. All is ready. Very impressive, but no one is watching. The superb bird of paradise calls to attract a female. And he has more luck. But what does he have to do to really impress her? She retires to consider her verdict. It's hard not to feel deflated when even your best isn't good enough. In Western Australia, these dolphins have taken on an even tougher challenge. The fish have taken refuge close to the beach, where the water is only a few centimetres deep. Tail slapping is a method dolphins often use to stun their prey, but it doesn't seem to work here. The fish are tantalizingly close, but they're still out of reach. So the dolphins try another technique. Vigorously pumping their tails, they work up some speed. And then they hydroplane. Their momentum carries them right through the shallowest waters and onto the fish. Now they're in real danger of being stranded. But fortune favors the brave. Younger dolphins lie alongside, watching. But so far, only eight individuals here have mastered this daring technique. at last. The mother sees her chick for the first time. She's keen to start parenting, 
but the father needs persuading to surrender the chick he's been caring for all winter. He must now put his chick at risk. In these temperatures, it could freeze in seconds. The male will have to let go. Eventually, the transfer to the mother is safely made. The chicks grow quickly on a diet of fish and squid. Soon, they're keen to explore, but always with mother in tow. This chick is less fortunate. Its mother has not returned to claim it. Another orphan is searching for a new family, but this female already has a chick of her own. Some orphans receive too much mothering from penguins whose own chicks have not survived. The urge to parent is so strong that they will compete with one another to adopt any chick they find. Many of these squabbles end in tragedy, as the poor chick is trampled to death. Those chicks that do have parents quickly learn survival skills. Even in spring, they must huddle together for warmth, just as their fathers did in the depths of winter. A group of chicks has got lost in the blizzard. Cold and disorientated, they search for the colony. It will not be long before the storm claims its first victims. By early summer, the chicks are surprisingly well-developed and now look ready to take on the world. Those that survive their first year have the best possible start in life, thanks to the extraordinary hardships endured by their parents. Parents who battled with the Antarctic winter and won. There will be no easy meals on this island. Walruses are the largest seals in the world. They weigh over a ton and are armed with tusks a meter long. Exhausted from his swim, the bear must regain his strength. The next day, a sea fog shrouds the island. The Wallaces sense that they're in danger. Using the fog as cover, the bear approaches the herd. The adults close ranks around their young, presenting a wall of blubber and hide. the barrier, but it stands firm. It appears that the world's largest land carnivore has met his match. There must be a chink in the armor somewhere. 
Not here. This female walrus is shielding her pup if he can just prize her off. The bear's claws and teeth can't penetrate her thick hide. With the herd retreating to water, the bear must move quickly. Having failed with one, he heads straight for another. The chance of his first meal in months is slipping away. seems increasingly desperate. It's now or never. He must avoid the stabbing tusks if he's to win. The flailing walrus is immensely powerful and drags the bear away from the shallows towards the safety of the herd. slips from his grasp.